wanted to look at the complications associated with ureteroscopy. However, when we looked at the literature, most of the meta-analyses looked at infectious complications in general. So we decided to look specifically at urosepsis. As well, uh, we decided to identify risk factors that could predict which patients might have a septic event post ureteroscopy. First, we did a, a systematic literature review. Uh, we look to identify demographic and clinical factors uh, that could be used and that were associated with urosepsis after ureteroscopy. And we worked with a statistician uh, to perform a random effects meta-analysis. There are a number of patient risk factors, uh, such as increasing age, female gender, comorbidities such as diabetes and ischemic heart disease, then there are infectious risk factors, such as pyuria and uh, a history of urinary tract infection. Then we have preoperative risk factors, such as the placement of a, a ureteral stent uh, and um, uh, patients who have a positive preoperative urine culture. And finally, we have intraoperative risk factors, such as the presence of hydronephrosis, uh, stone burden, and the duration of the procedure. There are other risk factors, uh, namely uh, intravenal pressure, which is very interesting and, and uh, is becoming more and more interesting uh, with the newer technologies that we have. But we decided to look at um, most of these risk factors to see which ones would be predictive of urosepsis after ureteroscopy. Uh, and that's basically what we did with our meta-analyses. We looked at over 250 articles uh, we then focused in, uh, based on our eligibility criteria, on 13 articles, which were the focus of our meta-analyses. The average age of the patients in these uh, articles was between 43 years of age and 77 years of age. 64% of the patients uh, were male. We had uh, almost 6,000 patients in this uh, meta-analyses. When we look at the incidence of urosepsis after ureteroscopy, this varied considerably uh, in those 13 articles. It went from 0.2% all the way up to almost 18%. And our pooled uh, incidence of urosepsis after ureteroscopy was found to be 5%, with a confidence interval between 2.4 and 8.2%. When this publication uh, came out, you know, we got a lot of feedback from urologists. You know, some of the urologists felt that that 5% pooled incidence rate was uh, accurate. You know, others felt it was too high. They felt that they didn't see that level of urosepsis after ureteroscopy. And still others felt it was actually too low. They, they thought there was some underreporting there. I have a number of thoughts I'd like to share with you regarding this, um, this 5% pool risk of urosepsis. Uh, I think, first of all, um, the variability in the perception of urologists uh, is based a lot on the variability on the definition of sepsis. There's mm -hmm. so much variation in how we define sepsis. So I think that plays a role. Also, as you know, uh, when we perform a ureteroscopy, patients do very well. And they're often back home within five, six hours. So if they eventually have uh, the unfortunate um, luck of having a septic event at home, they don't always come back to the institution where they had the surgery. They might yeah. present at a local hospital or community hospital. And so the surgeon doesn't always see their complications. So I think that also plays a role in our That's perception why. of urosepsis after ureteroscopy. And the final thought is we actually just completed a confirmatory study looking at a large data set from the United States of patients undergoing ureteroscopy, and we found the exact same rate of urosepsis after ureteroscopy. So for me, what that means is those patients who have those risk factors, uh, we need to be careful with these patients. And, and what do I mean by that? Personally, a patient who has a number of these risk factors, uh, preoperatively, I will explain obviously the risks associated with the procedure and I will clearly explain the risk of sepsis. Also, I might give them some antibiotics depending on which risk factors they have. Perioperatively, these patients with risk factors, I tend to reduce the surgical time uh, because we know that's one of the uh, predictors of sepsis. And then postoperatively, if a patient has a number of these risk factors, I will keep them in hospital for surveillance for about 24 hours just to make sure they don't have a septic event.
I think that's a very easy way uh, to apply this meta-analysis uh, and to really help risk stratify your patients to really mitigate uh, the very feared complication of urosepsis.